Well, hey there, folks. Hope everybody's doing well. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Sekonic L208 um, Twin Mate light meter, which I've been using for quite a few years now. I bought this brand new, probably from B&H, uh, maybe 12 to 15 years ago, and I've been using it continuously ever since. So. Uh, it's a it's a very convenient light meter to use on a meterless camera. For example, um, if you use old rangefinders like this Canon P, the 208 will mount right up top in the accessory shoe, and it's very convenient. Um, and um, let me just tell you a little bit about it. There are quite a few um, of these little meters on the market right now. Um, this is one of this is the least expensive um, that you can find in say a major retailer uh, there are some other options available on eBay or um, uh, one of the Chinese um, commercial sites and um, I'll put a couple links down below to some uh, some video reviews of those meters I've never used them don't know very much about them but they're certainly worth considering these right now are selling for $126 in New York um, some of those little Chinese meters are less expensive. And there's also the, uh, the meter under development by the startup company Raveni Labs out of Canada. Um, and I will also link down below to the interview given by uh, the, the proprietor of that company with uh, Nico Yacera. Um, and he sounds like a fairly serious and impressive gentleman. He, he sounds like he knows what he's talking about. And the product sounds very promising, and um, um, I'm, I'm very interested to see what it com he comes up with. Um, although the date of that interview is March, and he estimated delivery in September, and since then we've had a few events which may, which may affect his schedule. Uh, so who knows? Uh, but at any rate, if you're in the market right now, as of this moment, and you want a good, reliable light meter for your meterless camera, or maybe an old SLR where the meter no longer functions, um, this is a neat option. So uh, let me tell you a, bit, a little bit about how it works. So first of all, it's all plastic, which is kind of a disappointment you know, for $126, but um, most of them are uh, in this price range. Um, there are some more expensive options. There's, um, there's the Voigtlander, uh, uh, Voigtlander v, uh, VC2, I think it's called. Uh, that thing sells for about $225 US in New York. Um, and then there's another uh, light meter which I, I had not heard of before, but in preparation for this video, I took a look at what, uh, what was listed at, um, uh, at one of the major New York retailers. And Gossen is making something that's between the price of this and the, um, and the Voigtlander. And um, that looks, um, I mean, I, I don't know, it's, it's certainly interesting. Gossen's a, a well-known name. So uh, that, that may be worth looking at as well. But this one I am familiar with. I've been using it continuously for you know a good 12 years plus, uh, so I have a good bit of experience with it, and I am very happy with it. It does work very well. It's accurate. It's reliable. Um, I would not call it sturdy. I mean, it, it's it's plastic. I mean, it's just you know the whole darn thing is plastic. Um, but you know, for that kind of money, that's what you're going to get. Um, so essentially, it's got a it's it's sort of a neat little analog interface, which does make it somewhat unique. Um, all of the other light meters in its class have some form of a digital readout. Um, and um, uh, the, this one has a, uh, it, it's, it's a, an analog dial. So here's how it works. First, you're going to set the ISO right here. And you do that by gripping these, there's two, these two little plastic tabs on, on either side. Let me see if, see if you can see these. There's a little, you know, little plastic tab here and here. And you're going to grip those with your thumb and rotate this to, um, to set your ISO. It's going to go from 12 to, uh, wow, what, 12 to what, 12,500? Um, so it's a pretty nice range. So let's go ahead and set that at, say, 400. Um, so now I've set my ISO. So now how do I take a reading? Well, here's a neat little trick with this meter is you, it, it, it doesn't read light. It, well, it gives a reading at, when you press this button, and it, it's a... It's a read and hold. So it gives a reading and then, it, and then the, the needle holds. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So for example, let's just press this up in a general direction here. All right, press the button and it holds. So now I take this dial here and I, I set the green needle on top of the red needle. And I'm gonna do that because in a few seconds that red needle is gonna go back down to zero. 
Um, I'm not sure exactly how many seconds it holds the reading, but um, just in, just long enough for you to set it, set the green dial up on top of the red dial. So now, now there goes the uh, there goes the red needle. So now I've got my reading indicated by the green needle, and that is going to give me a range of shutter speed and aperture values. So for example, at this light reading, if I want to use an aperture as f4, then my closest shutter speed is going to be you know, just under 125. Um, or f8, my closest shutter speed is going to be just under 1 30th. Uh, f1.4 is going to be just under uh, 1 1,000th. Um, so I can, so, so I select the uh, the shutter speed and the aperture based on the readings here. Um, shutter speed ranges from 8,000 all the way out to 30 seconds. Now I have no idea how sensitive the, the photo cell on this thing is. I don't know if those, if that, um, if that range is a, a bit aspirational, uh, but um, uh, the, uh, the, the meter certainly works for ordinary you know, indoor, outdoor situations. I have not tested this in extreme low light situations. So again, let's just point the point this in a general sort of a general direction over here. I'm going to set my green needle on top of my red needle, and here, if I want to at, at this light reading uh, at ASA 400, I can set the camera to f8 one fifteenth of a second, uh, f1.4 one five hundredth of a second, f22 one half of a second, and so forth. Um, it's actually very convenient because you've got a full range of options. Um, you don't need to press a button to change one of these parameters in order to see how it affects the other parameter. Um, the entire range of options is displayed right here. Another neat thing about the, the, the way this thing reads light, that is the way that when you click on it and it clicks and holds. Okay, So if you've got it on top of the camera, then you're gonna, you know, you're 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 set. You're framing your scene, right? And you can push the button right there, and check it. Set the green needle on top of the red needle. You've got your range of readings now. Likewise, suppose for whatever reason um, you are. Um, your hot shoe or your, your accessory shoe rather is in use. Perhaps there's a viewfinder on here um, or perhaps you're using an old auto reflex or a Nikromat mat um, or another uh, old SLR that does not have an accessory shoe attachment affixed at the moment. Um, so where do you put the darn thing? Well I just keep it in my pocket and I take it out and I aim it at the subject in, you know, in sort of a general way and I just you know aim it at whatever I'm shooting at, press the button get my reading, then recheck, then aim again, press the button again, check, oh, it's way off, okay. Press the button again, you know, until, and I keep doing that, here we go, now that's, those are, those are pretty close. And I'll do that until I get two readings that are, you know, spot on, that are right on top of one another, so I know that I was aiming the, the, the device properly. Now there's no facility on here for actually aiming the light meter. Um, other than the you know the hot shoe or the, the accessory shoe attachment, um, but I have found it reasonably uh, e I found it very easy and very convenient to just hold this thing in my pocket, um, take it out, point it at you know if I'm shooting a model, just point it at the model, um, um, you know, in the general direction of the model, press the button, get the reading, um, and go from there. I found that to be very convenient. I've also found the, the light readings in this um, meter to be extremely accurate. Um, also, the battery lasts a very long time if you take care of it. Um, it's got, I'll tell you what, you know what, tell you what, let's do this. Shoot, oh, I'm so sorry. Not the damn tripod. Um, let's take a look at the contents of the box, which I saved because I'm a pack rat that way. Um, so here's the original box that this came in. And the box, it comes with a lanyard, which I've never used. Um, it comes with a carrying pouch, which I've also never used. Um, and an O-ring, which I'm not sure what, well, I know what that's for, but I'm not sure why. Um, a couple of attachment screws. Um, and the three-year warranty, which is long since expired in this particular model. 
and a set of operating instructions in what I assume is Japanese and English on the other side. So let's take a look at that for a moment. Hold on a second. Um, Here it is. There we go. Okay. So, one as one interesting aspect of this particular light meter is that it is designed to be used as both an incident and reflected light meter. Um, I have never used it as an incident meter, but you can apparently, and you can do so by doing this. This part right here slides across. This is reflected. This is how I use it. This is how I've always used it as a reflected light meter. But apparently. You can just slide that across and use it as an incident light meter as well, though I personally have not done so. Uh, the option is available nonetheless. Um, I don't think, I don't know if how many of its competitors do that. So we've got the guide needle, scale play after scale, EV scale, yeah. Right here, you've got your, um, uh, you've got your exposure value, what, I mean, whatever that's worth. I mean, I, I, personally, I do not think in terms of exposure value, but you know, perhaps you do. Um, you can attach the strap, I never did. Insert the battery, it uses a three volt, three volt coin type lithium battery, model CR2032. Um, you rotate the battery cover, which is, let's see if I can get a good, here we go. Right there, it's just a typical coin slot type battery cover. Um, I'm not gonna open it up because I don't feel like, you know, I don't want the battery to drop out. Um, but trust me, there, there, there's a battery back there. Um, Position the battery, that's not that difficult. Align the battery cover and so forth. That's fairly easy. Confirming battery strength. If the battery strength drops below the rated voltage, guide needle on the exposure needle will not display values correctly. Therefore, confirm the voltage prior to use by pressing the battery capacity checker button on the back of the unit. It is possible to continue using the battery as long as the guide needle is within the battery capacity range. And that means this. So, the battery capacity range is reflected by that blue stripe right there. Okay, so, so if I push the check battery check button here and the needle responds and goes into the range indicated by this blue stripe, then we're in good shape. So let's check that out. Here's a check button on the back and boom. Look at that. I'm going to call that a perfectly charged battery. Now here's the thing. I cannot tell you the last time I changed the battery in this thing. I, I do not remember. I have no idea. It has been years, literally years. Um, and so what's the trick? Well, my trick is I keep it in the refrigerator. <laughs> um, I've, I've never removed the battery from this unit. I just take the whole thing and I stick it next to my film in the fridge. That's where I keep it. I just keep the light meter in the refrigerator next to the film. And that's the trick. And um, that's what I've been doing for years. And it has kept that battery fresh. I, have, I, I, couldn't, I don't think that's the original battery in there. I can't be. I mean, it can't be. I bought this thing over 12 years ago. That cannot possibly be the original battery. Um, but it, 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 I haven't changed it in, in I mean, years. So anyway, um, that's the trick that I use. I just keep the whole thing in the fridge. And you know, when I when I when I'm shooting one of the range finders, I'll just pull it out and, and um, you know stick it in the bag. So set the ISO, switch them to an incident and reflected. We talked about that. Uh, receiving so the receiving angle. According to the instructions, the angle of, of coverage is 33 degrees or approximately 73 millimeters, which corresponds to approximately 70% of the angle for a 50 millimeter standard lens on a 35 millimeter SLR camera, uh, which is approximately 46 degrees. So the, right. so the 56 millimeter lens has a coverage of 46 degrees. The angle of coverage is 33 degrees. It's kind of too much information. Basically, it's roughly equivalent to a 73 millimeter lens, is what you're, you're basically getting full field averaging coverage. Um, as if you had a 73 millimeter lens on front of the camera, essentially. Um, do, 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 you know how to read the, the, the aperture values and the shutter speeds, I just showed you that. Instant light reflected. The, for, the shoe mounting is interesting because you can adjust the mounting position of the, um, of the shoe. So here's, a, you, I, I could have slid this thing one way or the other. Or the other. Honestly, I cannot tell you why I chose this particular location for this thing, um, but it works, and I could, you know, I could switch it around if I wanted to. 
I, don't, I, 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 have, I have no need to. Um, and it also comes with an O-ring. Here, here's an interesting question. In case a shoe mounting plate is not fixed to your camera, please put an O-ring in the groove of the shoe mounting plate. Why? I mean, apparently this O-ring is supposed to go like around here, although I have not the slightest idea why you would do that. I mean, I carry this thing around in my pocket all the time, and I've never thought to myself, my, if only I had an O-ring. Um, not sure why you would do that. Anyway, I assume it has some function, and now I'm kind of worried. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, but I've had this thing for a number of years. It is perfectly reliable. Um, my only real criticism of it is that it is entirely plastic. It's lightweight. Um, well, not lightweight. It's not a criticism, but it's, it's very plastic, and it's not. Uh, um, you, you don't want to drop it. Uh, I don't know how sturdy it is. If you were drop, if you were to drop this thing, I imagine it could be easily damaged. Uh, but fortunately, I have not done that. And uh, of course, now that I've said that, I'll probably, you know, whatever. But um, I've been very happy with it. Uh, I use it handheld, uh, as I described. If I'm, you know, if I'm um, just pull it out of my pocket, point it in the general direction of uh, whatever, whatever it is I'm shooting, take a couple of readings, and if they match up, then I assume that I pointed correctly. Um, and it, it just works beautifully. It has for years. So this is an option. Uh, it may or may not be the best option for you, but uh, there are other options out there. There's quite a few, actually. Um, but uh, I've been reasonably happy with this one. Uh, you know, my only real complaint is that it's, you know, I wish it was, you know, like metal or something, or, you know. But um, it's not, uh, it's, an, it's a neat little, uh, neat little meter. It works perfectly well. It does what you, what it, you paid for it to do. And um, if, you, if you have a meterless camera, um, you know, th this is a perfectly good option to use. Okay, that's what I've got for you today. I hope you uh, found the video helpful. If you did, please subscribe. As a matter of policy, I do not monetize my videos for 30 days following uh, release. So if you would like to subscribe and hit the notifications bell, um, you can see all of my content commercial free for 30 days following the live date. Um, and uh, please check out the links below. And I will, uh, I'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.